Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. I guess this one isn't really programming as much as it is working with our program. So last time when we left off, we finally have, you know, multiple towers, each with their own individual firing speed and projectiles and projectile effects, like the slowing effect going on right down there. And I know I said it's going to be doing commenting this time, but I think I'm going to move that back one more episode where we go through and kind of comment through everything and make it all, you know, easy to understand. Because I'm realizing as I look at this that we have a lot of the makings for an actual tower defense game, right? So we already have like a way to make towers and enemies and mazes and maps and money and cost and score lives. We have a lot of that kind of already built in. We have a good framework for a game to the point that you know, a lot of people already have been going ahead and kind of making their own versions of the game. And I definitely think it's possible for people to expand very, very far beyond what's shown in this video, right? So obviously this video and all the other videos are only 20 minute segments. And I'm just trying to get the bare bones basic uh, code down so that everyone else can make their own game kind of based on this knowledge and based on these tutorials. I'm not actually going to, well, I will eventually you know, through the series, make a complete game that will be deployed or whatever, and you can find it on, you know, who knows, wherever we put it online. But what I'm saying is the way I'm going about doing that is I'm trying to get the bare bones framework done for each important part of the game. Like first it was, you know, getting the screen to work, then drawing textures, then maps, then enemies, then towers. So instead of doing one part of the game from start to finish, like say towers or the map in the editor, I'm kind of getting the base for all these parts that people can go on their own and go ahead, you know, faster than just once a week. So all of this to say, to wind around to the point that I'm trying to make here, this episode we're going to focus on not actually adding new code to our game, but I'm going to show you guys a quick and easy way to export your game. And this is something that people have been asking me for a while now via emails and comments and uh, on Patreon as well, is how they can export their game and send it to friends, you know, or family or whoever, or post it online for other people to try and play it. Because right now you need Eclipse, you need to open the project in Eclipse, you need to link up the libraries. It's way too complicated. You can't just sit down at your friend's computer and say, oh, let me show you what I made, and then spend the next 20 minutes trying to download, you know, LWJGL and link up the libraries and stuff. So what we're gonna do this episode is we're just gonna make it so that you have one executable file that you can email to people or send or upload, and when they run it, they can play their game or they can play your game, assuming that they have the most recent version of Java installed, which most people do. First thing we're gonna do is export our current project. Mine is called Game Project, so just right click on your project file name right there and go to Export. Now we're gonna select Runnable Jar File and hit Next. And some of this might already be filled in for me, but it might not be for you. So just try and copy what I have on the screen here the launch configuration, I'm not going to click this because I have a million projects that are not related to this tutorial series. But it should say boot. It should say the name of your class, which contains your main method. So in our boot, our boot class, if you name it the same thing as I did, has our main method. So it should say boot right here. Export destination, you can click browse and save it wherever you want. Mine's going right into my desktop. And you can name it whatever you want to. Uh, this name doesn't really matter because it's not what people are going to see. Just make sure you name it something that you will know what it means. So like game version, you should, uh, game version two, I'll name mine. And library handling, just copy required libraries into a subfolder and click finish. And it might say jar export finished with warnings. If so, that's fine, don't worry about that. Uh, but if all goes according to plan, you should probably see something like this, just press okay and the screen will go away. The warnings just means that it's these things right here, like tower, tower cannon, and a wave manager. We just have code that is not, you know, completely finished. Like here, it's saying that we don't actually use quick load. We don't use tile size, so we could delete these lines in here. And that's something that you want to do and clean up before you export this game, you know, for a final, I'm getting errors here. Honestly, before I started recording, I accidentally deleted like a file, which contains a lot of information about where each class is, so that's why I have errors here, but just you shouldn't have those, so just ignore that. Uh, but I was saying, before you deploy your project in a final kind of state, whether you're going to put it on Steam or Android or whatever you end up doing, uh, it'd be good to go back and kind of fix these errors. In this case, just delete these lines. In other cases, 
you know, use variables correctly or suppress the warnings if you really have to, if it's some kind of weird fringe case. But at any rate, we exported our projects. I'm going to exit the clips now. And here is my desktop. And next thing we're going to do is download a little app called Jar Splice. And it's free to download. I will host a download link and put it in the description of this video. But if you don't trust my downloads, then you can just Google Jar Splice. And the first link should be a link from Ninja Cave. It is a free download and it will help us make a executable jar. And this is just a quicker way to do it than going into the actual like uh, command prompt screen and doing it this way. This is just kind of an easier way to do it. So go ahead and run jar splice once you have it. And there's four steps here. And with some add jars, add natives, main class, and create fat jar. So let's go ahead and add our jars first. Click add jars. And for me, I saved it on my desktop. So here's my, my desktop folder here. Here's game v2.jar. So first you want to add that or whatever you exported your jar as, your project as. Click add. Then go back and add jars again. And when we clicked create a copy of the library, that is this folder right here. It'll have the same name as your main jar, underscore, and then lib for library. Open that up. Oh my gosh. Open that up. And you're going to add these three, which is just our lightweight Java game library and our slick util. So add all of those in there. Next is natives. Click add natives. And this one didn't get copied over. So for this, we're gonna have to go and navigate back to the original, like first episode where we made our lib folder that has our natives in it and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to navigate to it right now. I'm not sure what's on the screen. So I might need to blur some of this out, but for me, it is in our workspace workspace and then lib natives and you're going to add all these natives every single one and click add so if you can't find it you might want to go back to the first episode where we made this lib folder and these natives folder and kind of remember where you you placed it uh, if that doesn't work you can actually open eclipse go to the java build path just like we did when we added the jars originally you can find the natives that way it'll show you a uh, a path where the files are located but once you add all the natives, next is main class. For me, mine is data.boot. And what this is, is it's the package name, which if you copy the same name as me, then it'll be data. And then the name of the class that contains your main method. So for me, that's boot. So data.boot. No .java or .jar, just data.boot. And finally, create fat jar. So go ahead and click this button. And we're going to save it to our desktop. This is the actual file that people will see. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, so I'll just name mine Game Runnable. Brian is cool. That's the name of my game now. Click Save. It'll say it was successfully created. OK, exit. And here is our game. So you can, you know, this is our entire game in one file. And it's actually not that big. We have a pretty small game here. It's only. 2.7 megabytes so pretty crazy double click it to run it and you can see it works so here we are on the menu screen here uh if we click play oh, so i'm going on my window if you click play we're in the game just as we remember it and it's completely portable so you can move this file wherever you want you can send it to friends upload it to websites do as you wish uh something else that's cool is say we can put it in a folder here and just name it you know game folder it doesn't need to be anywhere specific to run. It doesn't need to be in the same folder as your library or anything like that. It can be in its own little folder here and it will still run perfectly. Not only that, but if you run it and go to our editor and we make a uh, quick map here, that's supposed to be a smiley face, I guess, with a blue nose. Don't judge my art. Uh, if you click S to save it, we can exit the game. You can see it saves our map right there and that all works fine. Run it again, go to our editor and our map is still there. So that is how we can make our game portable. So I know a lot of people have been asking that for a while, and hopefully that helps you out. Next episode, I'm planning on going back and doing that editing through the code and cleaning it up a little bit, commenting, stuff like that. But for this time, I think that is about it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or if it didn't work out for you, or just to say thanks that worked for you. That'd be cool too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week on Indie Programmer.